side we are set up for mass injection we have the fishing all out uh, pneumatic air vise on the table ready for action we have 16 cavities um, of a 5 inch stick worm okay so BTS 5 inch BT stick I believe is what it's called had these molds forever one of the first molds I ever bought and it looks like we still have a ton of chameleon remelt here um, so we're going to be finishing that up but today is basically stick worm day cinco day um, whatever you want to call it day and we're going to do a ton of them so we are putting down the hand pour molds all right we have some lovely four inch dotted hickory shad there one of my favorites and we are trading those for these that right there yeah beautiful so we're doing a handful of different colors today all in pretty big quantities so this is the four cup size right or a quart uh, measuring cup and we're basically doing four cups a quart of each color uh, for I believe five colors so yeah we've uh, we've got our work cut out for us all right so welcome back it is still pretty early in the morning that's why lighting's a little weird there's a lot of shade or um, yeah sort of yeah glare in here um, however um, this is actually for one of my best customers um, he lives up in Canada so whenever he orders things from me uh, he really orders things for me and I owe him a bunch of stick worms so I was like well I got it I gotta knock that order out there were a ton of orders kind of ahead of his on the list that were mostly swim baits and so once I was able to work through those I was like okay that this weekend is the weekend that I can probably knock all those um, stick worms out so I said, hey, what better way to do that than make it my next video, doing a giant, giant worm or order, um, five inch stick worms. Uh, because most of us probably grew up bass fishing or started fishing with either just a ribbon tail worm or like a Yamamoto Cinco worm, right? So this being the stick worm style uh, bait, um, you're probably very familiar with it and you're probably a big fan. And if you've never seen the uh, pneumatic air vise, uh, what an awesome system for us bait makers. Now this is a double rail, right? So I can fit really large plate molds on this. However, we can fit the uh, stickworm molds just on a single rail. Pull this out, boom. Now we have about 80 pounds, 80 PSI, locking these molds up together. So we're not gonna flash, and um, it really makes it, really makes it great. Um, to run a large volume of injection and not have to worry about individual clamps or flashing or hand clamps that don't work as well. And it's safe, right? This is a very heavy, beefy system. You're not accident accidentally gonna knock a mold over. Um, it's just a better mouse trap. So like I said, I kind of already had a lot of this color mixed out. This is uh, just straight Lureworks Chameleon. There's probably a drop of black grape in there somewhere and maybe a drop of black. Um, nothing too serious, but uh, we're just going to get this melted back down. And then whenever we move on to the next color, we'll kind of show you the color build. They're all going to be single colors. Uh, so thankfully, no laminates. That'll make my life a lot easier. But uh, the goal is just to have a giant stack of worms headed to Canada. All right, here we go. First run, we are jumping right into action. So here we go, let's lock and load. Oh yeah. This is a 10 ounce injector, which comfortably fills um, all uh, 16 worms here. Do a little bit of topping off. Clean up. Yeah. I love how you have the confidence to push the injectors and not be scared of flashing. That is uh, truly a nice feeling. Yep. So 
basically we're going to be refilling this cup over and over and over with different colors and um yeah there's going to be a lot of baits for y'all to feast your eyes on in this video okay let's see how we did just go ahead and do some demolding here oh there goes the compressor but that's okay yeah ah uh, it's still a little gooey all right, now we're gonna just rock and roll through these things. All right, so got that one done. Next, it's gonna be a lot of this happening today. <laughs> Next, set those down over there. I love how they're just so purple from one angle and then they're almost like a green pumpkin from the next. And then some angles, they look brown. So that's sort of the whole idea of the chameleon though, changing colors. So, all right. Yeah, there we go. So let's pull them all out here. Yep, and there's just the next few in what is going to be 20 pounds of stick worms by the time we are done. All right, here goes round two for the chameleon remote. Get everything kind of mixed up a little bit. That way we have good flake suspension. And here we go. Let's knock them down. <clears throat> okay. And last but not least. Yeah, feeling good. Yes, sir. All right. All right, there it is. That's probably our final, or that's probably our last, like, full run in that color. So uh, we're going to be moving on now to the next color, which um, I'll have to take a look at the list to see what's next. I know that there's some motor oil in there. Um, there's some watermelon red and, and cool things like that. So, you know, really, really good fish catching colors. I think there's even, like, just a, a regular green pumpkin. Um, so yeah, we're gonna be moving on. Yeah, all right So we've got fresh raw plastisol measured out. This of course is let me see if I can get it Dead-on plastics those guys right there. This is dead-on plastics actual swim bait blend Okay, uh, a lot of people think you know when you're making a stick worm, you know They think of how soft the Gary Yamamoto Cinco is which it certainly has its perks being that soft uh, however, this customer does not want worms that are made out of jelly or gummy worm material. Uh, he wants a worm that he can actually cast 10 times before it rips off a hook. Now, that is not knocking Yamamoto, but a lot of people do not like the lack of durability in a lot of soft stick worms on the market. So we're actually using what I would consider to be a standard medium durometer plastic. It's dead-on black sinking plastic, so it already has a heavy, dense sinking action to it um, which means you can get away with using either no sinking additive like salt or you can get away with adding less sinking additive um, so anyway we're gonna run this straight as it is out of the bucket and um, on to the next color yeah those big cups take quite a while on the microwave we're gonna start with eight minutes and uh, kinda go from there we don't wanna you know you can always cook it a little bit more but once you overcook it you're screwed. You got to start over. All right, so now we're moving on to color number two, um, chartreuse pepper, which is chartreuse with black flake. Okay, so we're going to be using our dead on chartreuse. The label's peeling off, but that's all right. That just means that it's been through many, many molds. Okay, that color uh, has been used. It has uh, gotten, gotten its legs. As they, as they say, or no, 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 sea legs? I don't know what I'm talking about, it's early. But either way, we have made good use out of our dead on chartreuse over the years. I love how it turns it more green. Just the introduction of the black flake almost makes it a, a green. But yeah, this is what I like to call, or what I would call chartreuse pepper. Which is probably what it's called if you were to buy it like store-bought. 
So I doubt I came up with that. And that's just what I think of when I think of this color. So yeah, super simple. Again, straight dead on um, swim bait blend. And that right there is ready. All right, chartreuse pepper round one. Let's go. Sorry, we got a lot of mess on the nozzle of the injector for some reason. There we go. It's like when the injector nozzle gets a little bit cold, you plunge it down into the plastic and then it all wants to stick to the nozzle. Once it gets hotter, you won't have that problem. All right, for these, I guess we'll do a drum roll reveal. Okay, let's go ahead and crack the first one. Oh yeah. That's awesome. Chartreuse pepper. Makes a really great um, grub color too for like panfish baits, you know, just simple, simple, effective colors. You know, not everything has to be the Mona Lisa of a bait, but uh, that stuff certainly is fun nonetheless. Okay. Yep. Excellent. Excellent, excellent. Everything filled, no flashing. Everything is on track here. Yeah, there it is. Run number one of chartreuse pepper. Very nice. All right, round two, here we go. Yeah, excellent. We are cranking them out, folks. Cranking them out. All right, and here is round two. Yeah, this guy's gonna have every stick worm in Canada by the time this is over. Yeah. All right, next up on the color list, motor oil red flake. Okay, so we're gonna go with some motor oil, uh, MF changeable motor oil, and we're just gonna really get it in there. We're not really gonna count drops, all right? We're just gonna get it in there. All right, mix it in, or stir it in. All right, and then we're always going to spike it with a drop of cherry red from Lureworks. This is so much plastic, maybe two drops of cherry red, uh, because I do like to add a little bit more red to the current MF motor oil formula. It's not quite as red as the original counterpart. So let me kind of drizzle this out and see how the saturation is yeah, it's a little thin so we're going to add a little bit more just in general thicken it up all right and then here is the secret ingredient cherry red one two that stuff goes a long way so we're not adding much okay yep i can already tell the difference here in person hopefully it's coming through on camera so what we're gonna do we're gonna really 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 get this mixed in and then kind of do another test over here yep that's looking more like it okay yeah so I think that's good and then now we add a bunch of red flake if I can find my flake spoon here's the flake spoon so medium-sized red flake all right it's gonna kind of look like Christmas colors here until you see it from a different angle. That's when the effect really, really, really comes out. Okay. And that's basically it. Motor oil red flake. Really, really exciting color. I have made this person motor oil stick worms before, um, but not with the added red flake touch. 
All right, here we go. Round one on motor oil red flake. See how they come out. Okay, let's go. Such a pretty color. The motor oil, uh, what's really cool is that you get like three different colors in one. It looks so different depending on your angle of perspective. It's sort of like the ultimate chameleon color. You never really know how it's going to look, <laughs> which is very, very exciting. Yeah. All right, let's see how these turned out. Let's go ahead and crack the first one. Oh, yeah. Yes. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Look at that. There it is. All right. So, next mold, moving on. Let's get them going. Set those aside. Got our plastic remelted, re it sounds like. Sounds like the microwave is done. Yeah. Excellent. Okay, motor oil, red flake, round one. Oops. Was a success. Yeah. Awesome sauce. Pretty cool. What do y'all think? Well, so we started with just a handful of those from the Chameleon. And uh, now we have these two giant piles of stick worms with more on the way. So by the end of this, this whole thing is going to be full. All right, and round two of the motor oil. Yeah. And now we have laundry noise. It is just a good old fashioned day here in the world's worst fishing cave. I mean, no video is complete without background laundry racket. So if you're wondering what these baits are gonna be used for, this is this guy right here. Look at these smallies. Awesome stuff. I mean, Lord have mercy. So, yep, that is the eventual fate of these worms. Okay, so the next one is going to be our toughest one. It actually is going to require a little bit of color building. It's not straight from, you know, just one bottle. So we're going to start with a green pumpkin base, okay? This is Lureworks Green Pumpkin 109, but the <clears throat> label is long gone. All right, so we're going to start with a green pumpkin base, but then we want it to be a little bit orange, okay? So this is actually a match of a, of a goby color that this person uses um, up in Canada. Okay, all right, so there's our green pumpkin base. And now we just wanna spike it with a little bit of orange. Let's try three drops of orange and see where that takes us. We just kinda want it to be sort of a burnt orange green pumpkin. Looks like we're gonna need more. All right, there's eight more drops. The dead on plastics orange is very strong. Ah, there it is. Now it's coming through a little bit. Yeah. Now it's coming through just a little bit. Okay. Maybe a couple drops of black. All right, just a little bit more orange. Okay. Never made this color before. The photo example that he sent me um, I had never really quite made anything like this so I'm thinking it still might need to be I gotta pull it up hmm a little bit more orange just go ahead and really get it orange and then he wants black and copper flake in it. Okay. All right. There's our black flake, and then um, and then he wanted some copper flake in it, just like that. Sorry for all the noise. This is kind of a noisy video. We got the compressor for the air vice, and you know we had some laundry noise. So uh, again, sorry for all the noise today, but that's kind of how it really is out here at times. All right, here we go. 
let's do this uh, this goby orange color. See how it comes out. I gotta send the guy a picture of them, like in real time. So, in just a minute, once we demold these, I'm gonna send him a picture and let him see how they came out. Yeah. All right, let's do a quick little reveal and see how they did. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think that's rather nice. Yep, okay. More of a traditional pumpkin seed. You know, I was uh, going back and forth with him just now. And, uh, and he's like, yeah, I kind of want it on the orange pumpkin side. So that's what we did. There's a couple different ways of thinking about pumpkin. And um, he wanted the orange kind. So a burnt orange with a green pumpkin base essentially is what we were going for. He wanted some copper flake. So yeah, I think they turned out rather nice. Tell you what, I'm getting starving, folks. I'm gonna have to stop for a ham sandwich lunch break here. Yeah, there it is. All right, and round two is looking good. Yep, moving on. Gotta keep grinding. And as you can see, things are growing. Now we've got all of the motor oils uh, laid out basically we're just hanging them on the sprue for a while. Oh, they're starting to move We're basically just hanging them on the sprues for a while and once they've kind of set up a little bit We're starting to lay them out for final cure. So well looks like those are starting to Roll down the hill on me. So that's no good. But yeah, check it out All right, so next up is watermelon red and he wanted some salt in the watermelon red So I'm gonna add my salt now Okay, actually I'm gonna add it and stir it at the same time, sort of like grits. And I wanna add it now because it's gonna bubble and I still need to vac my plastic, right? So I wanna go ahead and add the salt now and then run everything through the vac to really get all this mess out. This is why I hate salt. Like, yes, you can, you can dehydrate it, you can bake it, you can try to get moisture out. It's always a problem. So I, for one, hate using salt. And just a smidge more, just to really rub salt into the wound. Get it? Okay, so we got most of the air out. Um, you can see how cloudy the plastic is with the, all the salt in it. So watermelon red, we're just gonna go with Lureworks 101, watermelon 101, all right? A pretty basic pigment, all right? And then now the flake is what makes it watermelon red. So we want some giant .062 size black flake. So we're going to add that in. It's a real flake heavy color. Alright. Then we're going to do some medium black flake. Just like before. Just like earlier that we've used today. Alright. So yeah, a little bit of medium black. And then I like to use small red flake. You can of course do this however you want. It's the .015 stuff right there. And let's get her going. Lots of flake. A very flake heavy color again. So, let's get everything mixed in. Woohoo! all that salt sink to the bottom. Gotta grind it up. Yeah. Yes, and just like that, we have the makings of watermelon red. All right, watermelon red salt sticks. Let's see how they did. Yep, they look like watermelon red. What an awesome fish catching color. That was probably my favorite color in high school. I would throw zoom flukes, uh, speed worms, and pretty much anything else I could get my hands on in watermelon red. And I used to slaughter the bass. It was uh, it was definitely probably my best color for uh, for just everything it seems. That and June bug. You know, I used to throw a lot of watermelon red horny toads, 
then then I kind of started throwing more June bug. Um, but yeah, watermelon red is always a go-to color. It's it's a very nostalgic color, and uh, it'll always have a special place for me. So yeah, there we go. All right, buddy, I did it. I put salt in some baits for you. <laughs> Hope you're happy. All right, and certainly last but not least is the white with silver flake. Now I've cut this with some dead on snow shine just to give it a pearly effect. And then a bunch of small silver flakes. So never hurts to have a shad type color, even in a stick worm, right? That wouldn't be necessarily what you think, but they're actually very popular. You know, uh, one of my favorite stick worm colors is Strike King's Smoky Shad. So, in the event, that is the last one that we're doing on camera today. So, yep, pretty cool. Look at this madness. <laughs> Holy moly. And there's still one color left, but we're not going to do it on film because it's another version of motor oil when we've already looked at motor oil. So yeah, that's about 10 pounds of these, maybe more actually. But yeah, like I said, we were running some stick worms today, guys. So yeah, I hope y'all enjoyed. And uh, let me know in the comments down below which color was your favorite. So we've got chameleon, we got motor oil red, We've got sort of the orange goby, um, chartreuse pepper, watermelon red, and then white with silver flake. So after all that time spent carefully arranging those baits, I decided for the thumbnail it would look better if they were just all in a giant pile. This will kind of give you some perspective on how much this is. This is just a giant pile of goodies, and it's heavy. <laughs> You know what this means? This means I have to put all of those back in their little nice and neat piles. Yep, that's just insanity. All right. <sighs> now I get to arrange them back on the uh, platter. Okay, everyone. Uh, yeah, I'm tired. I'm exhausted. That was about probably about four hours <laughs> with a little sandwich break. So. Yeah, definitely lots of stuff. Changing out colors a lot definitely slows you down. If that had all been just one gallon of one color, we would have knocked it out probably in an hour. Um, but, you know, we were uh, switching around. I mean, that's that's uh, six different colors that we did. Uh, four cups of plastic each. And then there's still one more left. So a lot of plastic, a lot of colors. But uh, anyway, hope you all enjoyed. This was sort of a, uh, a stick worm workout for me. Um, so yeah, we have lots of goodies from today, <laughs> baby monitor. We have lots of goodies from today um, on the on the table. And uh, like I said, let me know which one is your favorite. I think next week we're gonna try to come out with a video, sort of top ten soft plastic lures for the bass angler that you can make at home. So uh, stay tuned for that one. Still getting my thoughts together on it. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna go inside in the air conditioning. See you guys.